next presenter is Holly. And she will be talking today about the Lake Protection Work Booklet. So a little bit about Holly Evans from Cataraqui Conservation. Holly joined Cataraqui Conservation in June of 2001 and has worked in several business areas, including watershed monitoring, stewardship, source water protection, and development regulations. As the watershed planning coordinator, Holly leads watershed monitoring and reporting for Cataraqui Conservation. This includes surface water, groundwater, benthic macroinvertebrates, fish, snow, and other watershed characteristics. Information is used to report on watershed conditions, identify concerns, and inform management decisions. Making community connections that advance watershed science and restoration is also a focus of Holly's role. Holly has an environmental technology diploma from Sir Samford Fleming College. She was born and raised near Charleston Lake and is married with two children and enjoys a wide variety of outdoor activities. And it is with great pleasure that I turn it over to Holly. Thank you. I'll just wait, there we go. Um, some of my slides, just so that you know, Mal, um, there's got a few too many clicks. So when I get to one of those, I'll just say click, 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 and then we'll get all the information up at once. Okay, it's no problem. A little, um, overzealous with the animations when you're putting a presentation together. No problem. So, <laughs> thank you very much for, for the introduction. And this presentation is not just my presentation, it's made on behalf of the Lake Links Planning Committee. We work together on the Lake Protection Workbook. We've worked together on this challenge that I'll tell you about and worked together on a lot of the projects throughout the different areas of Eastern Ontario to help improve the shoreline with important partners like Lake Property Owners, Lake Associations and other community groups. So definitely um, a collaboration. So if you're already familiar with the Lake Protection Workbook, then parts of this pr presentation may be familiar to you. However, even if this is the case, the hope is that you'll take away something new to inspire action to protect our lakes and rivers. Next slide, please. Good, everything's displayed on there. So the Lake Protection Workbook is a self-assessment tool and it's intended to do a number of things, to reach a number of objectives through education. Um, those being improving water quality, providing more and better wildlife habitat, having less shoreline and overland erosion, enjoying and providing better viewscapes. So being able to look out onto your lake or onto your river and seeing naturalized areas to help um, feed our souls, as well as protect uh, the lakes and the wildlife that depend on it. Combating invasive species and having more time to enjoy. Oftentimes good decisions for the lake are good decisions for yourself, giving yourself more free time and that sort of thing. So as we move through the slides, you'll learn more about uh, the challenge that the Lake Links Planning Committee has coined this year called the Lake Book Challenge. So there's a hashtag up there and I'll tell you more about it as we continue through the slideshow. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so any time different ecosystems meet, biodiversity is greater. So there's more plants, there's more animals, there's more stuff in those locations. And the places where land and water meet, where they come together are very special, providing a myriad of ecosystem services. Every shoreline um, is what um, a lot of um, groups refer to as a ribbon of life because it's just so very rich. A staggering 90% of all aquatic and terrestrial life depend on the shoreline for some or all of their lives. So that's, that's some pretty heavy stuff right there. There's a lot depending on that really important zone. In addition to species survival, a protected shoreline and near shore or littoral zone. So a littoral zone is shown on this um, little image here, um, is the shallow area in water next to the shoreline where light can penetrate and help uh, and enable the plants to be able to grow in that area. The near shore area absorbs um, waves, reducing erosive forces, helps to keep the water clearer and more suitable for fish spawning. So a well vegetated littoral zone will help to reduce that wave action, will stop the sediments if there is any um, sands or silts, 
in the area from becoming suspended in the water column and then degrading the, the aquatic habitat in that area. Less erosion, like um, one of the presentations from Brian earlier mentioned, um, means that less soil, so less erosion, less soil is entering the water body. And often those soil particles are what the phosphorus is bound to, what those nutrients are bound to. So having the soil and the erosion coming into the lakes um, means that there's more nutrients and could um, also be more algae blooms. The Lake Protection Workbook focus on, focuses on eight key areas to rate the existing condition of any given shoreline. And I'll sometimes, I'll almost always be saying lakes, it is the Lake Protection Workbook, but all the principles and information within the document also pertain to river or stream um, locations as well. So there are lawns and gardens, shorelines, wetlands, wildlife, docks and boathouses, sewage systems or septic systems that we've heard of earlier, uh, light pollution and runoff. So next slide, please. Thank you. The image on this slide is um, the cover of the Lake Protection Workbook that you may have seen before, but it doesn't just rate uh, a shoreline. It does more than that. It explains each topic and how it relates to the lake or river, provides straightforward questions in the form of yes or no, true or false answers, or um, multiple choice. It also um, has related scores, depending on your answer. And the higher the score, the better the property is at protecting the quality of the lake or river. Most importantly, it includes resources and recommendations for improvements. Next slide, please. This workbook has been out for a few years. It was um, published, I believe, in 2019. and. Lots of communities have uh, made use of it, have ordered uh, printed copies to distribute, have um, forwarded and provided uh, the link to the digital copy as well. There's a PDF version uh, that, that can be shared. And on this slide, there are a few testimonials from different groups that have taken an opportunity to make use of this resource. And they, um, they have found that their associations find it very informative, um, easy to use, and they've not only shared it with uh, their lake and in some cases um, beach associations, but with counselors as well uh, to help inform different stakeholder groups that have different types of influence over what happens on a lake. So it's not all, you don't always have to own a piece of lake um, shoreline to be able to make a positive difference. You could be a counselor, you could be a girl guide, leader, anyone um, who is in a position to provide information that can help people make better decisions can use the Lake Protection Workbook to make a difference. Next slide, please. So shortly I'll show you um, 10 slides displaying on the ground work that has been implemented um, with some of the recommendations from the Lake Protection Workbook. This photo shows a naturally beautiful shoreline with native trees, shrubs, herbaceous plants, and it provides an excellent buffer to the water body. In the lake, you'll see, I hope you can see anyway, um, there are some kind of sticky up pointy plants. Uh, those are pickerel weed, and those are a favorite of uh, bees and butterflies, and it provides great cover for fish and frogs to be able to um, live happily in that area. Something that happens every year um, in the autumn in a temperate climate like we live in is that plants with leaves, they, um, they're no longer able to support the leaves because of the lack of sunlight and the change in temperature. So those leaves die and they, they fall down onto the ground or into the water. So having aquatic plants in and near the shoreline is really, really important because that material helps to fuel uh, the food chain. So at the very bottom of the food chain, there are um, animals, for example, aquatic benthic macroinvertebrates, so things like little studs that are kind of looking like little shrimp, I would say, um, and sow bugs who are in turn, they eat up all of that plant detritus and then are in turn eaten by um, my favorite insect, the dragonfly, which lives most of its life as a nymph in uh, the near shore area. And I happen to have collected um, some of the exoskeletons that are cast off by dragonflies when they um, change from a nymph to an adult. And I'll just kind of hold them up to the camera and hope you can see it. So there's one there. 
And there's lots of different kinds too. So something that's really fun to get people involved, I still enjoy doing it, um, but kids and anybody is to go down between May and September to a shoreline and have a look around uh, at some of the plants and the rocks and the side of your dock even, and see if you can find any of these exoskeleton cast-offs or exuvia as they're called, um, and learn more about the types of dragonflies that are in your area. I think it might be a fun thing to do. You can participate if you want. Um, is to maybe type what favorite animal you have um, within your own property or that you have encountered when you visit a natural space next to a water body into the chat. And then take some time after today, not necessarily right after the meeting, you probably want to get up and stretch your legs and do a little bit of research to find out um, what are the needs of this species that I really care about and is there anything that I can do on my own property to make a small change to make things better uh, for that particular animal. Could be something as simple as making a brush pile, planting a particular fruit bearing shrub, uh, securing a floating log out in the shallow water so that turtles can come up and bask. There's all sorts of neat little things that can be done. Next slide please. So this illustration is an oldie but a goodie I think and the part that I like about it the most is on the right hand part of the picture you can see that there are people slogging away they're really busy they're mowing the grass they're I think that man with the backpack is probably either I think he's killing some dandelions with some pesticide uh, but the people on the left side of the picture are having a great time playing in the water and enjoying the lakefront and because they're enjoying the lakefront in the way that they are, um, they're having, a, not only are they having a better experience, but the natural environment is as well. So we're very fortunate in Eastern Ontario to have so many lakes and rivers, uh, whether you have a waterfront house or cottage, or you visit many of the publicly accessible locations, there's a natural richness not encountered in many, if any other places on earth. So recognizing and respecting that our region is special and deserving of protection is a key to healthy lakes and rivers. Next slide, please. We'll now begin a virtual tour of some of the excellent work being done to restore and enhance the ribbon of life area that I mentioned earlier. So here you'll see efforts have been made to improve the shoreline by bringing back some of the wild. Uh, without this naturalized buffer, there would be no last line of defense, as I like to call it, for the lake. Rain would have fallen onto the mowed grass and then of course the, the property is sloped toward the water and it would move more quickly carrying those extra nutrients that might be bound to soil particles into the lake to fuel plant growth and algae growth. There would be no food for pollinators and no cover for small animals like shrews and, to shrews and toads. Um, this is just one example of how to improve a uh, lake protection score in the workbook by adding that buffer you can up your score and uh, congratulate yourself on doing a, a better job of protecting the lake. Next slide, please. So sometimes improvements mean undoing a previous project. When we learn about the impact of past decisions, we can make better decisions moving forward. The photo on the left uh, is, there used to be a retaining wall and that was removed and a sloped shoreline with uh, some riprap protection interplanted uh, with shrubs and other plants was completed. So animals that need to move between the aquatic environment and the upland with that previous retaining wall wouldn't have been able to do that. Not all of them anyway. A, a turtle would have had a very difficult time coming out of the water to bask in the sun. Turtles need to bask in the sun to warm their bodies to be able to digest their food because they're cold water animals. So now it's opened up a whole new area, a whole um, new possible environment for different animals by making this really positive change. The picture on the right is a new project. Um, these tube looking things um, are actually coconut fibers and they're called poor logs and they are intended as an alternative to placing riprap like in the photo on the left or a retaining wall for erosion control and there can be um, we can plant plants in between them and on them and seeds and after two to five years these logs uh, decompose and turn into soil and they will provide long-lasting shoreline protection once uh, the plants have established themselves. Next slide please. 
This before and after picture has lots of different um, aspects to it that I'll touch on. In the before picture, we see that the mowed lawn extends right to the shoreline and the aquatic environment is at a deficit here. Um, there's no plant material, there's no shade, there's no cover. Uh, and the geese really like to have uh, a mowed grass area to graze essentially. And not a lot of people enjoy all of the um, presence that the geese leave behind. So one of the ways to help deter geese from frequenting a shoreline property quite so much is to have uh, something in the way so that when they coast in from the open lake area, um, they're not quite as comfortable landing is the idea. So the after picture shows that some native plants have been planted. The geese are less likely to come here and critical ecosystem requirements have been restored. Over time, more plants uh, will colonize from the seeds that are just waiting in the soil. Uh, I really like the, the term for the seeds that are waiting in the soil. It's a seed bank. So the seed bank is there as an investment and it's just waiting for people to give them the chance uh, to flourish. Next slide, please. Sometimes um, an action to protect lakes is more of an inaction. So if we think about uh, what's needed to access a shoreline, then we know that a relatively small path could do the trick for you know, walking down to the dock to have your morning coffee, accessing a boat um, that may be uh, tied up at your dock, bringing a canoe down for a ride. Having a lawn that extends all the way down to the shoreline is more than is needed. Taking only what is needed is one of the keys to a healthy relationship with our lakes and rivers. I recently learned um, an important lesson from my parents. Years ago, I promoted no more areas along the, the lakefront property where I grew up. It, there was a, you know, they were down there with the weed whacker all the time, making sure that it was all um, neat, neat and tidy. I told them about the seeds in the soil and they're just waiting to grow. And if they you know, didn't do any cutting, they wouldn't have to go out and buy plants and plant them or anything, it would just happen. But they didn't get it, they didn't understand. All they could see was the grass would get long and shaggy and they're in an area where a lot of people can see their property and they thought, I don't really want that mess. But lo and behold, Watersheds Canada visited their property and encouraged them to establish a no mow area. Even then they thought, okay, we'll, we'll do it, but I'm not sure. So they were told to wait and waiting is hard and humans move really quick and we are impatient, but nature takes time. So they did wait. And in the first year, they were unhappy. Um, the grass was long and gross. <laughs> they wanted to cut it. Uh, but the second year, other plants started to thrive and grow up through the grass. The next year, there wasn't really that much grass left at all. And then they were, they were hooked on their natural shoreline, but it took three or four years before they were really convinced that it was a good decision. Um, they wanted to know what would happen next year. Naturalization was unfolding before their eyes. And as the years went on, 15 of them so far, every time I see my mother, uh, she tells me about how there's so many more birds and butterflies and there's such thick, thick moss, more frogs and turtles and, and more beauty that she can now appreciate. So a key message is to wait. Nature takes its time. Next slide, please. Another option is to uh, establish low maintenance native plant gardens. This is more of a prescriptive approach. It requires some more planning and some more doing, but if you're into gardening, um, it's no less effective to reduce runoff and restore nature. Next. Having a phased approach, I'm just waiting, this slide point? there it goes. A phased approach to shoreline activization may be a great fit um, for different situations where one ease into the shaggy grass or ease into purchasing native shrubs and plants. Next slide, please. In disturbed areas, invasive plants thrive. Um, in this case, European buckthorn dominated the shoreline. So with a good amount of effort, these trees were removed and have been replaced with native trees and shrubs that are a better fit for the native animals. So this is newly done, but in a few years, um, they will start to, to take over the area and it will be quite nice. Next. This photo shows a newly established woodland garden. Its function is to slow the overland flow of water. So like I said, slower water drops what it's carrying it's often carrying soil particles that are bound to nutrients. Phosphorus is regularly called the limiting nutrient because primary production or plant growth relies on available phosphorus. And when it eats it all up, can't grow anymore. 
more phosphorus equals more plant and algae growth. A key message for lake protection is to try for a natural water cycle where much of the precipitation is slowed down to enable time to soak into the soil. Next, please. Any house or cottage requires a sewage treatment system. Because these systems are underground, it's easy to forget about them. In cities and towns, people pay for sewage treatment. This isn't the case in our rural areas or almost all of our rural areas anyway, but it doesn't make it any less important. All human made materials have a lifespan, a lifespan and this septic tank that is pictured here being um, removed by that backhoe uh, was done. Um, it was all corroded. So if we can think that in lieu of paying our water and sewage treatment bill uh, in the rural areas, it's, it's our job and our expense to have the tanks pumped out and inspected every three to five years to make sure that they're working as intended. So you're, you're basically your own utilities department uh, when you own a rural property that is um, unserviced by a public utility. Next slide. There are lots of different options for docks. They come in many shapes and forms. And on the left side of the picture is a crib dock. And crib docks completely go all the way to the bottom. They cover up that important littoral zone where the plants like to grow up and provide fish um, habitat and cover and food and um, they make oxygen and feed the food web and everything else. So anytime there's a crib dock, it covers up any possibility of any of that happening. Low impact docks like those um, that are pictured on the right side of this slide maintain flow underneath. It's also important to think about them not being too terribly large because a large, large dock, even if it is floating, prevents the sunlight from penetrating as well. So again, just taking from the environment um, as is needed to be able to enjoy things, but not to go overboard. Um, the Lake Protection Workbook highlights other options for restoring and protecting our lakes and rivers too. So I really encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. Um, and like I also mentioned, the digital copies, copies are available on Conservation Authority websites, Watersheds Canada, some of the lake associations, etc. Next slide, please. Something I like to think about are cumulative benefits. You've all likely heard about cumulative effects, but this is the opposite, and it's true as well. So instead of looking just at the negative, that everything that can happen at a lake uh, when you know some trees are cut down or a big dock goes in um, and then it has a negative effect on the lake. Every positive change makes a difference too. So each time something like is recommended in the lake protection workbook is done, the balance tips in favor of the healthy lake. So you're improving the immune system essentially of that lake by doing something positive. There are many options uh, to make improvements. Some require more work than others. Some only require require work if patience is not your strong suit. So for instance, not having, um, not mowing in a particular area, that nice diverse buffer will get there, but you can speed it along by doing some planting as well. It is difficult to get through the awkward teenage phase of the buffer strip by letting it occur naturally. And that's not, that's not for everybody. So something as simple as replacing a light bulb from a, a cold white color to a warm white color and not leaving lights on all the time can change the life of uh, bats and moths so that they're able to thrive. Um, some plants and some animals will live their entire lives on a shore, uh, on a small shoreline property. So making some changes like putting a brush pile in or turning off the lights at night um, can mean the difference between their survival or not. Another thing that um, is interesting to consider is the time scale of different species. Some animals only live for weeks or months and a positive change, even for a period of time, um, can make a big difference. So delaying um, raking in the springtime until the soil has warmed back up, uh, that short delay can mean that the, the animals that survive within that leaf litter pile um, can live another day. Next, please. So this year, the Lake Links Planning Committee is extending an offer for all lake and river associations. If you email uh, the email that's showing on this slide here, info at watersheds.ca with this code LL21PW, you'll receive 
free printed copies of the Lake Protection Workbook. Um, additional uh, copies can be purchased, um, but we are really excited to offer uh, these free workbooks. Supplies are limited, um, but we want to get out as many workbooks as we can. Next slide, please. In addition, uh, we're having a lake book challenge. So if you make a positive change or have made a positive change, take a photo and post it uh, to social media with um, hashtag lake book challenge or email it um, to, again, info at watersheds.ca with a caption and there will be a prize draw. The winner will receive a $100 gift card to a local native plant nursery. We're having the contest not end until August 1st, 2022, so that um, for the next season, we're very shortly going to probably see some snow and the ground is going to get frozen and we wanted people to have time to implement some new changes or people that are new to the Lake Protection Workbook have time to look at the information and take some action. Next slide. And that is all I have on behalf of the Lake Books Planning Committee. I thank you for your time and I hope that you will uh, participate in the Lake Book Challenge and take us up on our offer of the free Lake Protection Workbooks. Thank you so much, Holly. That was awesome. And uh, I hope everybody takes advantage of our offer and get some Lake Protection booklets as well. And Holly, we will get you your <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation today. It was fantastic. Thank Are there much. any questions for Holly? Again, I can't see the chat, so I'm just waiting for Monica. Yeah, there's nothing in there right now. Okay. Um, someone had asked for the direct link to the workbook, which I did put in the chat. We'll also be sending out an email later next week with all of the different resources and contact information from Lake Links today. So you'll have the recordings as well as people's emails, information about this Lake book uh, challenge, and also the free offer for the 20 uh, workbooks. So if you haven't written everything down, it's okay. It's coming your way next week. Well, thank you so much, Holly. Um, and thank you to everyone uh, for joining us today. We'd like to take a time to thank our sponsors, um, the SM Blair Family Foundation, the Federation of Ontario Cottagers Associations, Cataraqui Conservation, Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority, Rideau Valley Conservation Authority, and a special thank you to all of you who made personal donations. We really appreciate it. Um, and again, thank you to the 2021 Lake Links Planning Committee. We couldn't have done it without you. Please take a moment. Um, like Monica said, she'll be sending out information to all participants. Um, there is a link to um, our online survey. We want to hear from you. Uh, your comments and suggestions actually go into working on next year's uh, workshop. We take all your comments into consideration, give us topics, ideas, things that your association might be struggling with or want to see on Lake Links. And um, we will look at each and every one of them and we really appreciate it. And mark in your calendars, October 22nd, 2022. We are hoping that we can do an in-person uh lake lake links for the 21st annual link links workshop at the perth civitan club um so fingers crossed it'll be an all-day workshop again um and so put that in your calendars and stay tuned for more information as we go on and thank you to everyone today um i really really appreciate you spending your saturday morning with us i hope you learned a little bit and um, and if we can take anything away from today, I think it is that we are all want to be on the water or we want water is a very important part of our lives. And whether you, you take a stroll by the water, whether you canoe, whether you own property and, and the wildlife that surround it and are a part of it. And if you can just do one thing, just one little itty bitty, itty, bitty thing, whether you plant a plant, you stop mowing, you change a light bulb, that will impact that water. 
and that and our fresh water can continue to thrive for future generations. So on behalf of the Lake Links Committee, I want to thank you and have a great day. Bye.